Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly and what's going on in his Chicago trial. And you, you know it's about to conclude up and some crazy things is going on in the courthouse. But then you have the Federal Brooklyn Appeal coming. And so it's like very stressful. It's a very stressful time right now. But I want to talk to you about two things tonight. I want to talk to you about um, what's going on in the courthouse. So we're going to get to that. And then we're going to talk about Tyrese and what's going on with him. I'm bringing him into the equation because as I tell you here at R. Kelly Appeal TV, to constantly pay attention to what's going on in the world so we can get a understanding and overstanding of what is really happening as this court case, this historical court case of Robert Sylvester Kelly goes down. And so we're going to start with the courthouse closing on um, today. So, you know, we figured that after Monday's Labor Day, you know, we were going to start the trial back up, you know, but according to WGNTV.com, and CBS and, you know, some other reliable sources. They said 19 hours ago, operational issues closes Chicago's federal courthouse delays R. Kelly's trial. So an operational issue has prompted the temporary closure of Chicago's federal courthouse on Tuesday, pausing in person courthouse proceedings, including R. Kelly's child pornography and obstruction of justice trial. The court announced Monday night. An alert posted Monday night to the Northern District of Illinois' website read, the Dirksen Courthouse will be closed on Tuesday, September 6th to, due to an operational issue at the courthouse. The courthouse will be closed and jury trials will be suspended for one day. Kelly's trial entering its fourth week was set to resume at 10 a.m. Tuesday. Jurors were last in court on Thursday when they heard the first witness called by Kelly and his two co-defendants. That same day, Kelly told U.S. District Judge Lennon Weber that he would not testify in his own defense. Lennon Weber opted to give the jury Friday off in addition to Monday's Labor Day holiday. R. Kelly says um, that he won't testify in the federal Chicago trial and the trial has featured testimony from you know the women uh, from the goddaughter from looking at the teen girls seen in the tapes in 2008 last month's prosecution prosecutors played for juries 17 video clips that they alleged um, showing Kelly in inappropriate um, positions with minors and then Kelly a federal grand jury in Chicago um, indicted Kelly 55 on 13 counts in July 2019. So we wanted to just share that with you. Um, and it's amazing because when you have Derek Goddess saying that, you know, there were threats and different things and he needed a, uh, um, he needed a, uh, what is that? A protection order. It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy all over again. So yesterday, um, this was uh, broken down. And let me see. U.S. District Clerk of Court Thomas Bruton confirmed late Monday that the Dirksen um, courthouse will be closed and the jury trial will be suspended on Tuesday. But he did not pr provide further explanation. There has so far been no indication that a closure is related to Kelly's trial. Still, it is highly unusual for officials to close the courthouse for an entire day on such short notice for reasons unrelated to weather. Previously, the courthouse was shut down August 10th, 2020, following rioting and looting in downtown Chicago. Officials explained in that instance that the building would be closed due to police activity in the downtown area, street closures, and public transportation disruptions. The building has also been abruptly closed a few times over the year 
when hazardous substance was detected in the air, but those closures typically lasted a few hours. Kelly's trial, which is nearing its end, was expected to resume Tuesday after a four-day break. Defense attorneys were expected to call additional witnesses, including former Chicago Sun-Times music critic Jim Dergatis. One of four videos now at the issue in Kelly's current trial, Dergatis in 2002 received a videotape from an anonymous source alleging depicting Kelly with... Um, abusing a 14-year-old girl. Daryl McDavid, Kelly's former business manager and now co-defendant, has also promised to take the stand. U.S. District Judge Harry Lennon Weber agreed to a request from the jury to take off last Friday. He also told them Kelly's trial would end this week without fail. However, the building closure leaves up in the air, whether the case will be able to wrap up in that time frame since defense attorneys still need to conclude their case and lawyers on both sides need to deliver closing arguments before juries uh, begin to deliberate. That means the trial could likely spill into the fifth week. So what do you think about that? <laughs> when God says, you know, when the universe begins to work its magic, Things like that just happen. You know what I mean? It's not something that's man-made. So I just want you to be aware of that. I needed to bring this out tonight because by tomorrow it will be old news. And I just got a chance to sit down and revamp before my, my last uh, podcast that I did today. So now we move over to what I promised you with Tyrese. So Tyrese Gibson was one of the few individuals that literally stood up for Robert Sylvester Kelly when, you know, he was talking to Fat Joe, who was kicking it with R. Kelly about how not to judge, you know, don't judge Rob. And look, he's in the same position, child support issues. So we're going to listen to this um, video that happened in court. And it's kind of muffled, so I'm going to go back over it um, with the actual article. So here we go. Let me see here. I'm just super happy that you guys are here with me right now because I want to get your point on all of this. There's a lot going on in this world. Here we go. 2018 tax return. If I recall your testimony correctly, Mr. Gibson, you said in 2018 you were financially in, quote, shambles. Is that correct? Yeah. So in 2018, when you were financially in shambles, do you know how much you made that year? I don't. According to your tax return, you made $2.221 million. It's page 32. Do you want to check my math? Sir, I'm asking you because I don't do the CFO thing. Here's a question to you, smart No. Person. Hey, that's enough. You right. go sit down. We'll take a break. Lawyers back now. Mm, so, when you are uh, in the court on the turf of the criminal justice system, there are personal ways that you behave. And this is not it. But look at what they've done to Tyrese. They've made him this epiphany, epiphany higher than the normal average individual. So he says in court for child support that he's trying to figure out, they're trying to figure out He's ordered to pay $10,000 a month in child support after being um, scolded by this judge. And this just happened like two days ago, like, sep well, September 1st. Um, God, this week has gone so extremely fast. But anyway, um, Tyrese Gibson was ordered to pay ex Samantha Lee Gibson around $10,000 a month in child support with the judge telling the uh, actor during a recent hearing, put that money where it belongs in the children, in the child. Um, Gabrielle Chung reported this at uh, September 1st, 2022 at 4.45 p.m. 
So things got a little furious with Tyrese Gibson when he recently appeared in court after his divorce from Samantha Lee Gibson. This week, the Fast and Furious star took the stand during a hearing to finalize parenting plans with his ex, with whom he shares three-year-old daughter, Soraya. In a courtroom video obtained by TMZ, Tyrese was ad admonished by a judge for making a snarky comment to Samantha's lawyer about after he was questioned about his finances as part of the divorce proceedings. He, he quotes Tyrese, I don't do the CFO thing. Here's a question for you, smart person. Now you can take that <laughs> as him, you know, being sarcastic. But he may really have just said, you're a smart person, so I'm going to ask you this question because I'm not a chief financial officer. Okay, Tyree snapped, prompting the judge to cut him off and scold him for talking back. The judge then chided the 43-year-old, telling him, if you do it again, I'm going to hold you in contempt. They just want your money. When you're on that court, you better play like you're on their turf. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tyrese, they wanted to create the Fast and Furious. They wanted to create the baby boy, the thug life, you know, and all this and all that in the characters. But when you're in their courtroom, you better sit back and you relax or they're going to hold you in contempt and you're going to spend more money than you would have, you know. And I think he learned that that day. So if you do it again, I'm going to hold you in contempt. You don't ask questions. That's not how this works. Do you see how they treat you when they're, when you're, when you put yourself in their turf on their court? They're the bullies on their court. They're going to tell you how to behave in their systems court. Tyrese was ultimately offered to pay Samantha around $10,000 a month in child support per courtroom footage posted to YouTube by Hip Hop Inquirer magazine. Now, here's my thing. If you're making $2.21 million, then why would you have a problem paying $10,000 a month? Because, I mean, me, myself, personally, I can see paying 15000 just because, number one, this judge ain't going to tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do when it comes down to me and my family, on my family side. What are your thoughts about that? So in another video published by TMZ, the judge, who also reportedly declared Tyrese and Samantha to be legally single during the hearing, was her telling the sweet lady singer that the judgment is not a punishment for you. So you're going to see the dividends it pays in your child. The judge continued, put that money where it belongs in the child. The courtroom hearing comes nearly two years after Samantha first filed for divorce from Tyrese. According to court records reviewed by E news, the social workers submitted her complaint for divorce September 2020. The duo later confirmed their split with a joint statement in which they described the breakup as a painful and significant development in our lives. Our intention is to remain the best of friends and strong co-parents, they said in December 2020. We feel incredibly blessed to have found each other and deeply grateful for the four years we have been married to each other. Our journey together has been a ride of both ups and downs, but it's a journey that neither of us would have chosen to take with anyone else. L News reached out to Therese and Samantha's attorney for comment, but they didn't return back their, um, their call. So, I mean, it seems to me that the minute that you have a child, like I said, in one of the videos a while back, if you don't have three times the amount that it takes to raise a child in America from birth to 18 years old, which I think is over, I think $292,000. If you don't have that per child, then maybe you should worry. People should think twice before they become intimate. Because this is the very same thing that trapped Robert Sylvester Kelly up. And that's the reason why I'm talking about Tyrese, his friend, right now. Because um, it's just so ironic that four years, 
I mean, four years, that's not a lot of time. What, what are you, your thoughts? And, and also, you know, I'm going to share with a few people how to conduct themselves in court. You know, I went to court, I went through my court process five years, literally on bond for five years. And I will have to tell you, it is no joke. But when you go through it, you go through it, you stay strong, you stay committed because the minute you give up is the minute everything is going to change on you and you have to answer for yourself. There's nobody else to answer to. So when you go into a courtroom, there are some things that you do and there's some things that you don't do. Okay. I don't care if it's for traffic ticket, for child support, for criminal proceedings on federal grounds. These things will always be uh, what you should do or should not do before your court hearing. Take the day off. Don't try to go to work and then, you know, say I'm going to court because your mind is not right. You're not at that point where you can really function. What if there's traffic issues? So just take the day off. You need that to deal with everything that's going on in your life. Have someone watch your children so you don't have to worry about coming back home at a certain amount of time. Give them the whole from eight to four. You need a babysitter completely from eight to four. The time that the courthouse is open. Okay. Because they can have you sit there. I literally sat there sometimes for approximately two to three to four hours just to be told it's continued. So then you have to make sure that you have parking money. Many of us use credit cards, so it's difficult to park. Mm. And in our state, we still have the coin slots. And if you're in, in court in a hearing, you're not going to be able to go out to put money in the meter. So guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to park at one of them all day parking spots and don't just pay for three hours, pay for the whole day. I literally, when I filed my income tax return, I had over $695 relative to parking downtown for my hearings. Seriously. And it was crazy. So these should be no issues, no type of issues. Figure out how you're going to get there. Your court summons you. They give you an address, a building number, and you're to check in to the clerk of court and let them know that you're there because you can just go there. And if they don't have you checked in at the clerk's office, that's another issue. You see, so you want to check your bus schedule if you're driving or riding the bus. Make sure that you're there an hour ahead of time. So then that way you're just sitting there relaxed, getting your mind right and ready. That's how I had to do it. I would go there to an hour beforehand to sit there for two to three hours. Make sure you ask for days off ahead of time. And if you're driving, make sure you know where you're going to park. Plan what you're going to wear. Don't go looking like you're going to the club because that right there could be contempt. I've seen it. Literally, I've seen people go into court and turn right back around and said that they were inappropriately dressed. And that was it. That could have been their their freedom. You know, this is how they play on their courts, their their court turf. So you might be tempted to wear clothes that feel comfortable and, you know, hoodies and all that. They're going to treat you like that. You got to respect the area of the court system, especially if you put yourself there. And many of us do. We put ourselves there because something drug us into that court system. It's not like they just, you know, which some of them do, you know, um, harass and bring people into their court system. But the majority of people, I assume, is there for their own, you know, whatever they've done. 
I know that was my situation. But when you go to a hearing, you should wear the kind of clothes that you would wear at a job interview. No jeans, no sweatpants, no flip flops, no t-shirts. If you can help it, wear a nice blazer, a tie, a blouse that gives a respect. And when people see you as a respectful person, then they'll respect you when they talk to you. And then if you have any questions, you want to call the clerk. The clerk will not be able to give you legal advice, but the clerk can give you helpful information such as where you should park your car, what forms you'll need to fill out to bring with you and where to check in. When you get to court, you want to find where your hearing is going to be. As soon as you get to court, locate where your hearing is. If you can't find a room, ask a clerk. At the courtroom, there will be an area to sit or stand while you wait for your case to be called. Ask a court employee if you're not sure where to wait. Go into the courtroom early, at least 10 minutes before your scheduled hearing time. You should be in the courtroom, not the hallway. If you're not in the room when your case is called, you might lose. Now, that is a civil matter, but in a criminal matter, um, such as the case that I was in, I would have to sit out in the hallway and wait until I see my attorney. My attorney and I would then walk into the, the, the hearing room. Um, and then we would discuss whatever we were going to discuss, but I would check in with the bailiff. They would, you know, pat me down, make sure I didn't have any weapons or whatever. So you shouldn't have your, any weapons on you because that could be another issue. You want to show respect in the courtroom, listening carefully to understand what the court staff is saying. This is a very stressful time. And so me personally, I just had to breathe. So that's why when I got there, um, the way people talked to me, I didn't take it personal. And I realized that it was all an exam for me to see if I had learned anything from this situation. So when you speak to the judge, you should also call them your honor or in a magistrate or sir or ma'am. So there's a respect factor that you need to do when you're in their court system. And this is something that they didn't just invite you into. You somehow or another got there. Okay. Now things you should never do. Don't show up late. On the day of your hearing, it's very important to arrive early. You'll need to walk through metal detectors, put your belongings away. Um, depending on how busy the courthouse is, don't, don't use your cell phone. Don't use, don't text. You will not be able to use your phone. Shut it completely off. There was many a times I shut it completely down. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't force me to go and just listen and, and see who's texting or whatever. Many a times, um, I left it in the car. Um, don't interrupt. When someone is asking you a question, you let them completely, you know, you know, um, ask the question as it should. And if you don't understand, ask them to please explain yourself. So when you do speak, it is eloquently thought out. It's not something you just thought on the top of your head. Now in the hearing, never interrupt the judge or the magistrate or anyone that's talking, even if it's the court stenographer, which they really don't really talk that much. You must wait until your turn and learn how to speak in court. And don't be afraid to ask questions. You got the clerk, you got the judge, you got the magistrate, you got anyone else who's a, you know, a bailiff, you got everything. So when you're hearing, when your case is called, you'll go to the front of the courtroom, you get sworn in, you'll be asked to raise your right hand. The person doing the swearing in will say, do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? You're going to say yes, hopefully, um, or I do. And that is what you must do. Tell the truth. You know, unless you have some immunity of some sort to where you can falsify information or not worry about dates or and, and then not worry about perjuring yourself from not worrying about that stuff. But hmm, I digress. Anyway, follow specific rules of the court so that your evidence is important to your case. Learn more about how to present evidence. We'll talk about that in another um, 
podcast. After both sides, you have told their your side of the story. The judge will either make a decision right away or take it under advisement. That means the judge will think about what their decision will be outside of the courtroom and let you know later. When the decision is made, the judge will issue an order. That's those things that I read when we talk about um, at Robert Sylvester Kelly's motions and his um, offers um, that Bonjean writes out, you know, and transcripts and different things like that. So here's your final must do. Follow the order. Whatever the order is, a judge's order is binding. That means you will have to do what the order says, even if you don't agree with it. It is what it is. So if it's to pay restitution, if it's to pay child support, if it's to pay the ticket, if it's to go to child support and, you know, um, get counseling and meet them back in a year, that's what you must do. And these are things that we've learned in the criminal justice system that makes us prepared um, and I believe everyone should have a little criminal justice in their background um, as far as education is concerned, because you never know if you're going to ever need it. And so I'd rather have the education and never need it than to not have had the not to have had the education and went through what I went through. You know, I wouldn't have been able to make it even all the way down to uh, probation and parole. You have to know how to get in touch with your probation officer, meet and and connect. Thank God my probation was just, you know, go one time, meet the probation officer. And then I was mandated to make a phone call every month. But I had to make sure that I was scheduled to make that phone call every single month, because if not, it would have been a, a check on me and they would have been like, I would have made my life a lot harder. So for, I think a whole month or, or a whole year and a half after being on bond five years, doing three years, coming home, I was on parole for a year and a half. So that literally meant that I had to report to someone and reporting is not always easy because guess what? When you deal with your stress in your everyday life, you may forget to have called on the 15th or the 12th or the 30th. And then you are on the 17th, like, oh man, there could be a warrant out for you because now they feel that you flee the rules and regulations and guidelines. They're not that, that stringent, but you know, anything can happen. So it's best. So what I would do was set my timer on my phone and I would say, okay, Today is the 10th and I'm supposed to, um, you know, call in on the 14th at, you know, 1050 or 10, 10 o'clock. So what I would do is I would set my timer two days before. So, and then I would set my timer the next day to remind myself. And then I would set my, my timer the day of, and it would always be an hour before time, a half hour before time. I would snooze it a hour, a half hour, 15 minutes. And then it was that time. So I, I was literally on the, on the dot dialing in at 10 o'clock. You see what I mean? So it made my life a lot easier. It helped me get through the process. A lot of people didn't even know I was on probation because of the fact that I didn't have to report. But that's what you do when you can go through a whole system, follow the rules, you know, abide by the rules, even incarcerated, and then come through a halfway house and follow the rules and then come home. Because now it's putting you in a position where you're going to always be thinking, let me follow this rule because this is the most valuable part of living is freedom. So with that, I say, Tyrese, I pray that you didn't have to pay extra for contempt or possibly get thrown in jail. But this is what my grandson and I were talking about this. And he said, and he made a really good point, a good valid point. He said, guess what? He thinks he's in one of those those movies. He's, you know, baby boy was rough, wasn't he? Baby boy, you know, oh, <laughs> you know, the way he talked to his girl, fast and the furious, always wanting to kick it, just kick it. 
So then you don't know how to present yourself in court. And that's what the issue was. But first of all, I feel like there should have been no court. If you're going to go in, I would have just signed the papers. I don't know if that's how you do it. I've never had to pay child support or had child support paid to me. But what I do know is that if I was supposed to pay child support, I would literally just say, okay, where's the papers? Let me sign. This is what you say I got to pay, especially if I got 2.21 million. Come on. My children are going to always live good. No matter what I make, I'm going to always focus on them and them first. You know, what's your, what's your thoughts? I'm going to leave some area in the chat just so you can leave your thoughts, your feelings, your views. But I thank you for coming back and listening to this podcast. Thank you so much for being here on R. Kelly Appeal TV because right now there's so many things going on with R. Kelly. You can be listening to anybody's transcripts, but you choose to be here and I appreciate that. Also, I will keep you posted on any new thing that's coming um, up in the R. Kelly world, in the Robert Sylvester Kelly's um, trials. Please send a shout out to him. His pr Your prayers are so phenomenally needed. And, you know, I believe that we're going to make it through this. Um, their goddess may be afraid to come to court. So they might have just said, well, dang. If this is a subpoena, what do we do if he's subpoenaed to come to court and and he this is the court date? Now, all of a sudden, there is no court date because the whole entire the whole entire Chicago um, courthouse is shut down. It's amazing. It's amazing how the universe works. So let's just keep an eye on everything. Pay attention to what's going on in the world today. Pay attention of all the people coming forth with child pornography issues and situations that's going on in their lives and how they're handling. I'm not going to report everything. I don't have that to do. That will drive me completely. All of my day would be used on communication here. <laughs> you know, R. Kelly is more than enough, but I know Tyrese was his friend and I wanted to include this in the historical aspects of R. Kelly Appeal TV. So again, I thank you so much for being here. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.